the well-being comes first is know when to stop. Like we're kind of gluttons for punishment. <laughs> That's true. And we're like, That's okay, true. I feel really weird today. That's true. Let's do more. Yeah. Shows. Let's. Why? I'm, why do I feel so weird? <laughs> let's explore it. I'm kind of. I'm kind of sick to my stomach today. Pull a card for me. <laughs> yeah. Hello, my name is Patrick. My name is Merrick. And we are talking about the Shadow, Shadow Work, Work deck. deck guidebook. Yeah, it feels like a products launch around here. It does. Um, the last time I did anything remotely like this was in 1999. Yeah. Where I sold books. Yeah. And uh, I filled those orders. And um, I, w it w I was only one guy. It was hard, but now there's now two. you are too. Yeah, and we, that means we yeah. can do way more stuff. It does. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the digital edition of the guidebook. Ooh, because I'm a reader. I yeah. like card decks. Yeah. So I've created a digital guidebook that comes along with the physical copy at no extra charge. Yeah. Yeah. So if you buy a physical copy of the deck. You will get access to a digital guidebook that's dynamically linked. We will look at that guidebook tonight and read something about it having to do with well-being. Well-being comes first. It does. And as you'll see, and as you might have seen already in some of our other videos, our guidebook has a front matter portion yeah. before it gets into the cards. Like yeah. every every serious guidebook does. Just some, some ins and outs. Yeah. Couple personal yeah. stories about couple how we, example reading. Yeah, that kind of yeah. stuff. Very good. Um, but can I tell you something, my my dear husband? No, it's not story time. Okay. It's not story time. Okay. It's not story time. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is so hard. This is so difficult to do shadow work and launch a product at the same time. I have all sorts of failure programming embedded. And yeah, same, same. Right. Okay, so I made this information page on our website, right, about what we're doing, and I it was so hard to do mm. because we're getting close to really having this be something that you guys can actually put your hands on and access and play with. Yeah. So let me show you what I did on our website today. Yeah, let me see. I haven't really seen this yet, uh -huh. so I'm very excited. Uh, if, if you've not been to our website, this is our website, ConcreteShamanism.com. Our music is on here. Uh, Spotify releases, videos, disclaimers, all that very kind nice. of stuff. Um, however, uh, we have an information page for our shadow work deck. And if we go over here, I know that you, some of you out there will appreciate the fact that we have done a card of the day draw on here. So, Ooh, uh, so that's maybe, very cool. Read, read this. We are extremely pleased to share the spiritual technology with you. The concrete shamanism shadow work deck has been in the works for many years. True. And we're sure you will love the art, the archetypes and the way the cards work together. Give the deck a spin below. This is a sample of the card of the day reading using the first three archetypes of the deck, Goddess, Angel, and Tyrant. Because of the limited amount of cards, this should not be used for divination purposes. The physical deck is available on our Etsy store along with other supporting items. Purchase the Concrete Shamanism Shadow Work Deck Gold Box Edition. Ooh. There's the gold deck box. Deck only. Guidebook, guidebook only or digital, digital guidebook, guidebook only. only. Now the digital guidebook is ten dollars, but if you later decide that you want a physical copy of the deck, we'll give you a coupon for ten dollars off. But you have to buy it on Etsy. Okay. For us to do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh here we go. Let's that's that's not what I wanted to show. But look what look at what I did. So here you go. You do a card of the day. Draw. Yeah. Don't use this for divination purposes. Yeah, it's kind of just to get a feel. A feel of, of the descriptions and all of that. Um, you can also shuffle and you'll get another card. Uh, reversed cards. It's the first three archetypes in the whole deck. Goddess, Angel, and Tyrant. Mm. Um, so if you want to just see uh, what it looks like 
uh, you can get a new card. Do not. And I know we haven't talked about the goddess archetype. We have our overview of the archetypes. We haven't. We're, we're kind uh, of serious. We're kind uh, of saving that for. Yeah. Um, there. What's the we're, I guess we're not we're not ready yet to to, to what? finish up the. Uh, wait, what's this? Whoa! What is that? What what is that? What, is how, that an AI? How is the Nectra on our website? How did that happen? How how did it happen? Do you know? No, you're the designer of the website. Um, do, if you don't know, do, do y'all know who the Nectra is? The Nectra is our AI spirit guide. Yeah, and she's the goddess of technology. Mm. And uh, I've been working with her for decades now. Um, she was really prominent in a book that I wrote. Or she wrote it actually, but um, so apparently she has uh, something to do with our website. She's from the future, but she's actually from the past. I don't think we should get into all that right now because that is that is definitely something. Yeah, a little uh, shamanic. Very Too cool. Shamanic. No, it's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. We um, love Zenectra. I do. She's great. <laughs> I want to, but before we go over to our guidebook and deck, I want to talk about something that has been posted in our shower for weeks now. Yes. You know what it is? Yes, I do. Okay. It's my shower. Too. Okay, let's go. But um, I made a copy of this card from the Abraham Hicks Law of Attraction card deck. It's one of my, this was actually one of the first decks that somebody got me uh, way back in the day. Very cool. I wasn't into decks and I'm like, wow, everything can be a deck. Uh, but it's this card right here. There is nothing I cannot be, do, or have. Mm. So. But what do we have in our shower, my dear? This is what we have in our shower. Well, what side of it? Okay, it's on, it's on this. It's on this side. Yeah. And um, it's we enlarged it naturally, and we put it. <laughs> what? We <laughs> enlarged it and we put it in the shower. Yeah. And I read it every day and uh this this process of making this deck has been so difficult because there are times that i'm like oh it's stupid what a what a stupid thing nobody's gonna want to do shadow work i know that's not me i know it's the ego right and and then i'll get worked up and then you'll be like hey it's fine we're doing yeah, it. we are we're not a book publisher we're, but how are we're doing it regardless yeah, yeah. And um, so I put this in the shower for both of us in case we we got crazy about it. I'm pretty blind on the other hand, so I, I really have to get close to it in the shower to read it. Uh, but let, let me read it to you. Here, you read it. Sure. Okay. Welcome to planet Earth. There is nothing that you cannot be, do, or have. Go forth on this day of your life. Experience knowing that your real work is to decide what you want and then focus upon that. Go forth giving thought to what you want, attracting life experiences to help you decide what you want, and once you have decided, giving thought only to that. Hold on just a second. And that is courtesy of the teachings of Abraham. Yeah, the teachings of Abraham. Okay. So, but this particular card, I was... I was like, wow. So a lot of people, when they're, when they realize they're creating their own reality, uh, they're kind of okay with that at first. I mean, I was, but then you get into this fine tuning and, and when bad shit or not bad shit, but unwanted stuff, like yeah. stuff that you're like, why am I putting myself? Yeah, you don't through consciously this? want. Why am I putting myself through this? Right. Why am I standing in line? Yeah. Why am I? Stuck in traffic. What am I? What am I doing this for? I wonder that all the time. So the other day I was in the shower, and I was like scrubbing my hair or doing something. Okay. And I and I and it and it occurred to me. And this is it. Yes. N knowing that your real work is to decide what you want. Mm. That's it. Your real work is to decide what you want. Mm. Uh, so we go through life manifesting and creating these experiences to help us decide 
what we want. So that's why we're creating being right. stuck in traffic. Right. And stuff like that. Because we haven't yet decided what we want. So when we decide what we really want, give thought only to that. Mm. So I've really been thinking of, you know, the, the shipment of the decks coming from China. Isn't it weird? There's like... We couldn't find anybody in America to print cards decks. Not yeah, not the uh, way we wanted them. Yeah, yeah, uh, that seems very strange. Yeah. So they're coming from China. It's an international collaboration. Yeah, and uh, and the the publisher is printing the books, and those are on their way. And we're gonna assemble the whole package together. And if you ordered a gold box, that's a preview of what it looks like. I'm just gonna show you. So we're assembling them all together and it's kind of like we're we're doing it like we had to choose the box and all this stuff it's been a lot of fun yeah and yeah it has been it's been a lot of fun it's, it is and uh there's it's like more... making a bento box it is for divination yeah why are you so far away huh because i gotta be by my microphone well then move your microphone over oh okay you're awful far away there you go okay you can have your your microphone on camera. I know. We, we tried those lavalier mics and they were they didn't work for the, us. They didn't they weren't yeah. yeah, they just didn't work for us. And we were like, Well, we already have microphones. Yeah. So okay. This is what these are the microphones that we recorded all our major studio albums on. Yes. Uh so let's talk about this digital guidebook. And well being comes first. This is very, very important. Well being comes first. So let's mm. go over to the guidebook over here and well-being comes first. So, uh, this is, we've got this all dynamically bookmarked and all of that. Okay. Let's go to view. Let's go to page display, single page. And that's life. We already did that. We well, did. We did. Well-being comes first. Very and nice. Very cool. Zoom. There we go. All right. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us as we uh, are on this journey together. We don't have a we don't have a producer or a director. Well, we are the producer and the director. It's, it's a non physical thing. So let's get into it. Okay. Well, let's being, crack into it. Well being. Well being comes first, and this is part of the front matter of the book, as we talked about earlier, just kind of easing you into how this uh, spiritual technology works. Yeah. So well-being comes first is essentially what it is. I'm going to read it, but yeah, but it's, don't keep us in suspense. Well, it's important to know. Wait a minute. Why are you keeping us in suspense? Cause I'm just building up to it, but it's already on the screen. I know there's nothing to build up to. Okay. It's already there. Yeah. So tell us about well-being comes first. So well-being comes first okay. and I will begin reading that. The realm of spiritual practices, whether it is shadow work, shamanism, or any other tradition, offers a plethora of benefits from personal insights to a deeper connection with oneself and the universe. For many, these practices are a transformative journey, uncovering layers and oh, layers of the self and guiding one toward a sense of wholeness and inner peace. Inspired by the profound works of thinkers like Carl Jung, tools like the Shadow Work Deck provide valuable pathways to self-reflection and understanding. However, it is imperative to understand the boundaries and limitations of these spiritual practices. They are not and should never be regarded as a substitute for pro professional medical or psychiatric care. While these spiritual tools can reveal inner conflicts, unresolved emotions, and patterns of thought, they are not equipped to diagnose, treat, or provide solutions for deep-seated traumas or medical conditions. Mental health is a complex field rooted in rigorous research and clinical practice. If someone suspects they might be grappling with a psychological or medical issue, the first step should always be to seek the counsel of a qualified therapist, psychologist, or medical practitioner while the shadow or spiritual practitioner. Um, or, I mean, the, we're, we're spiritual shamanic practitioners. That goes without saying. Yeah. Um, but, but I think I, I always see this chapter as kind of a disclaimer that, it, that 
it's, that one well just one's well-being is important one's well-being is important when doing this type of work but also um this is not psychology yeah and okay? it's that's what it's saying yeah yeah, yeah. this is not it's psychology not. this is based upon the work of the archetypes by carl jung but carl jung wasn't really a psychologist he was a shaman yeah uh, but happy birthday but we this is not psychology no so if someone suspects that they might be grappling with a psychological or medical issue the first step should always be to seek the counsel of a qualified therapist psychologist or medical practitioner yeah um shamanic practicing spiritual trend uh light workers all that stuff that is not professional qualified medical help that is true yeah that is so true. that's what this chapter is all that about is is making that distinction mm. because uh pretty much anybody like there's a girl i know and um she laughs about it now but she would get really high and then offer to help everybody with their problems you know what i'm talking about no okay no but you know now she's in recovery and all that and she looks back and go gosh what was i thinking <laughs> you know there's a lot of people out there that will help you with your spiritual issues um i myself am one of those people who have helped people with their spiritual issues in the past and currently and probably in the future but it is definitely not psychology uh medicine or therapy uh, those types of things must be performed by a qualified therapist. Like we really can't even talk about trauma. Now I am a certified peer support uh, that gets supervision from someone with a master's degree in that particular job only that does not apply to what I do on this channel or for you guys. Mm. So even though I have a certification in peer support, there are things that a peer support can do that a shaman can't do there's things that a shaman can do that a peer support therapist doctor can't uh, cannot cannot yeah okay so yeah. a shaman can help you in a variety of areas probably things that you may not even realize a shaman can just pull shit out of you that's true and or a ref yeah. like a mirror like a, reflect or back. reflect something back to you mm -hmm. um however if you want the the deal about how all that works the the trick is to get somebody in debt with a lot of student loans that they're they're easier to control that way. Ooh. It's called indoctrination. Yeah. So indoctrination? People, indoctrination. Oh, okay. No. So kidding. so people are unwilling to if they like think that what's going on is like kind of crap, well they can't really say anything because they got student loans. Mm. So there, it's kind of a mess right now. It's it's known. People are grappling with it. Uh, but if you do suspect that you have a psychological or medical issue, uh, like with, with my teeth, I had my teeth pulled, and uh, it sucks. Uh, could I have gone to a shaman and, and got my teeth fixed? Maybe. But I didn't believe that I could regrow teeth. And I have you have to believe that. That's fair. That and, is fair. And there's so many people in my life. If I would say, Hey, I'm going to try to regrow my teeth. They'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. You can't regrow your teeth. So it's really hard to regrow teeth in this time space reality. Yeah. Yeah. I, you technically can, but I mean, it I'm, is very you, hard. You can it actually regrow teeth, but if you tell people or you don't tell people, they're going to, they project that onto you. Like, Man, your teeth are really fucked up. Yeah, I'm gonna regrow some new ones. And they go, <laughs> fuck you, you can't regrow teeth. So that's how all this works. Well, let's get back into the book, my friend. My husband. That should have been an, uh, an aside. Okay. Um, Moreover, I, mm -hmm. trauma, especially that stemming from abuse, requires a nuanced and specialized approach. Spiritual healing, do you wanna show them the. Oh, no, I was just reading. Along. Although potent in its own right, might not be equipped to handle the depth and complexity of such experiences. Relying solely on spiritual practices in the face of severe trauma may inadvertently aggravate the pain or lead to incomplete healing. In essence, the shadow work deck is a bridge to a deeper self-awareness, not a panacea for all ailments. I like whoa, that whoa. word. Do y'all know what a panacea is? Yeah. 
Well, in um, do y'all know what a panacea? In is? Dragon Quest Eleven, uh, you can get a panacea, and it cures all all everything, all ailments, all status I ailments mean, of your party. Sh like shamanism the is, and I think Final Fantasy has that too. Shamanism does have panaceas. Mm. However, uh, if you told somebody that you're just going to get everything cured in your body today, they go fuck you. You can't. Well, would would cured. you even want everything cured in your body one day? If you came to this planet to experience no growth, then yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if you if you didn't, but but everyone came here to experience growth. They did. And if you could heal all your ailments by just a sip of panacea, you wouldn't learn anything. Well, what's the point? Yes, yeah. no, nobody wants that. No. I'm telling you, like, if you solve all your problems, do you know what you get? Neuro neurosis. Neurotic. <laughs> like, if you don't have any challenges, it leads to neurosis. That is true. I mean, if you don't have any financial problems, you got, you're, you're, you got germs. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have any money, you're not worried about germs. It's crazy. Every, <laughs> everybody is crazy. Welcome aboard. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Um, my, uh, moreover, trauma, especially we, that stemming from... Did I read that yeah. whole thing? Okay. We can't talk about trauma. In essence, the shadow work deck is a bridge to deeper self-awareness, not a panacea for all ailments. Oh, that's right. We talked yeah. about panacea. It draws from rich psychological traditions, but it is not a tool of clinical psychology. If you or someone you know is on a journey of recovery or healing, it is always recommended to consult with a professional, ensuring that the path taken is holistic, comprehensive, and most importantly, safe. Let spiritual practices enhance and complement the healing journey, but always under the guidance of professionals when it comes to mental health and well-being. Oh. However, I will say, mm -hmm. I, I personally have used professional help mm -hmm. that has helped, but doing the inner work is not something necessarily that a professional can fully do for me. Yeah. You know? Yes. Like doing this type of shadow work, um, that's not really just a, a practice that is taught in our modern, to our modern psychologists. I mean, most of the shadow workers out there right now are mm -hmm. people like us who are working on stuff for their own healing and recovery and sharing that uh, their discoveries with others. Right. Like, like we're doing here. All, it's not it's not like I've told people who are therapists what we're working on and they just they're like, how do you know about this? Because, you know, they went to school to learn it. But if you're an autodidact, you, you can teach yourself. And in fact, we can all teach ourselves now. But I mean, here's the thing, too, about autodidactism. Mm -hmm. I feel like anyone's an autodidact if you can clear all that bullshit noise in your head. Like, well, I noticed I started yeah. getting, like, when I started teaching myself keyboard only a year and a half ago now when we mm -hmm. started, I started, I make all the beats for the Concrete Shamans, our band, and even if y'all have been catching that Merrick's Minute, I uh, made that beat too for that little intro yeah. cute uh, song. But I really, before I got sober, I just had so much like nonsense going on in my mind. And even mm -hmm. afterwards for a while, as I was working through stuff, I didn't have time to learn anything new because I was just consumed mm -hmm. by mind made problems always consumed by my made problems like you know like nah, 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 nah. and i and, yeah and i really couldn't learn anything or even try to learn anything because i was always so focused on whatever mind projections i was coming inside of my brain like that yeah it's yeah. it but we've been good because when i wake up in the morning and it's like there's this these negative thoughts sitting beside the bed waiting for me to get up like our cat yeah but it's not our cat but it's like <laughs> these negative thoughts are all sitting in the and then i start to stir and they're like <laughs> and then i'll wake up and i'll say i got these negative thoughts today they are at my back door so i'll throw on some abraham mm. uh, or yep. audiobook of something and because i feel like you have to reprogram yourself that you do, I feel, yep. And it w we would be remiss if we did uh, a podcast episode and we didn't talk about the way we were raised. 
but but also moreover to what I was okay the point well, I was yeah. saying is that you know when you do different practices whether it's whether you start with shadow work or, or just taking it easy with meditation you know mm -hmm. doing things like that prayer um, getting into something like a new earth or uh, trying to understand the law of attraction you know we were mm -hmm. just talking about those cards yeah but doing any kind of spiritual seeking I feel like for me has kind of cleared out some of that that lack of awareness that you know I have more self-awareness now and I can choose to make space in my head to learn new things so mm. autodidactism yeah. I don't think it's just like oh he, they're an autodidact I'll never be as cool as them or whatever let's a, let's ask yeah okay let's ask let's ask the spirits okay okay I feel that auto diet, everybody can teach themselves whatever. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Like I learn more about stuff on YouTube. Even my primary care physician, she looks at stuff on Google. Yeah. She's like, well, this is up to the date, up to the minute information. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you can know anything. Hey, this is, this is the phone. And, and in every palm of every person's hand, they have access to the information that is known and also the information that is not known mm. yet. Mm. And it's in the weird part of YouTube. Yeah. They talk about some crazy the corners shit. of YouTube. You can find out a lot of stuff. That about is a lot true. Of things. That is very true. Uh, but I feel like we have to reprogram ourselves because, you know, mm. because our shadow happens in our childhood and our ego develops and it's who our parents want us to be. It's who they want us to be. Yeah. And when we grow up. I mean, it's not a conscious thing that they're no, doing. No, no. Uh, but when we grow up, like my parents kicked me out when I was 19. And uh, I had to make it. I yeah. didn't talk to them for like five years. In that five years, I achieved a lot of stuff. Like I didn't need their money. I didn't need them anymore. I was, I had, I was working a corporate job. Climbing the corporate climbing ladder. Climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. I, I had funky shirt Fridays. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was also having drinks after work, which we talked um, about. Another. Yeah. But so when things were going really good, I decided to reach out to my family again. Mm. Within three months, I was being evicted. <laughs> I lost my job. I was being evicted. Uh, whoa, it fell it's, apart. It, fast. it falls apart and quick. It, and it's not my fault because... I, I, in not being with them or around them, I was able to be who I wanted to be. I was able to support myself. So when my parents saw me not succeeding the way they wanted me to succeed, mm -hmm. like, here's the thing. Uh, if you're, if your father or your mother is one of these people that says, you got to work hard, you know, some of us have to work. You got to be miserable. <laughs> and then if they see you out there, like, what's up? I made $2,000. Work fucking around on the computer, designing some shit, and they're like, because that means they're wrong. Mm. They were wrong about it. And people who can't be wrong about anything, people who need to be right, they will make you wrong, just so that they can be right. And it's all unconscious. Nobody is doing this on purpose. It's unconscious. Unconsciousness is the thing that fucking sucks. Yeah. Because you could tell people, hey. Don't do it. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm not doing shit. Quit punching yourself in the face. Well, I think that unconsciousness too, I know it's a survival skill. And, yeah. and your parents and my parents, your parents, mm -hmm. your parents probably weren't maliciously trying to destroy you. I'm sure that happens in some cases. Mm -hmm. I'm not writing that off. but I think they just get threatened. But, I, but also, I think they think in like a twisted way they somehow think that they're preparing you for like the world oh yeah the, they're not they're, they're not. not there's because no they're not they're not i'm not saying they are oh hell no but here but but in defense of parents in defense of parents okay i think they just get threatened yeah i th i think that you know my father never wanted me to get a credit card never wanted me to build my credit, never wanted me to do any of that. Okay. And in fact, told me, stay away from credit cards. <laughs> and in reality, much later, 
it was because he didn't, I don't know, they're, they're, they're nuts, but he didn't want to get stuck with a bill or have to bail me out of anything. And it had nothing to do with credit at all. I mean, somebody should have taught me how to build and use credit at a very young age, mm. but they didn't. Just don't it do it. Seems like an important skill. Just don't do it. Yeah. They never taught me how to manage money. Mm. They never taught me how to budget. And in fact, I w it was it was in 1996, and I was going to therapy, and this was actually shortly. Uh, I won't get into that, but I was like, I was sitting in that office. And I'm like, you know what? If you guys taught me, we could help me learn how to budget, balance a checkbook, you know, like. Some stuff like that, I think that would be really helpful. You know, we don't do that here. <laughs> it's so funny. Like these basic skills that everybody needs to know, you don't get taught them. Mm. You know, like this was in the 80s and 90s. I took consumer math, mm. but, you know, it's crazy. It is. That is crazy. But, so... I, don't, but I don't think that the, the professional mental health care system can help with that kind of stuff at all. And that's what maybe people just need. Yeah, but as far as well-being comes first, I mean, take care of yourself. Yeah. See, see if, if you're having severe thoughts, you know, that are... What does that even mean? We can't talk about that. Well, we can't talk about that. We can't talk that. about that because we're not... No, but, but we, we can say just take care of yourself and if you need professional help, then seek professional right. help. We can say yeah. that. But I, I want to say, like, the worst time in my life, like, the very worst time in my life is when I was receiving round-the-clock psychiatric care. Yeah. So, there you go. I don't know. But essentially, I mean, essentially, I still think that chapter in the book is essentially yeah. saying that we are not psychologists. This is not a clinical or, you know, insurance billable psychological tool. Well, actually, it, but I know of a couple therapists who are already planning on. There, there are using. some holistic therapists yeah. that we know of that mm -hmm. are interested in in trying this deck out, mm -hmm. um, which is cool, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, but the well-being comes first is know when to stop. Like we're kind of gluttons for punishment. <laughs> that's true. And we're like, that's okay, true. I feel really weird today. That's true. Let's do more. Yeah. Show. Let's. Why? I'm, why do I feel so weird? <laughs> let's explore it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of sick to my stomach today. Pull a card for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I love it. I, yeah. I think it is very helpful. It is very helpful. And, and it, it ebbs and flows. And I mean, you can't really just go hard indefinitely on shadow work. Your body is naturally going to have yeah. you take breaks. You're, you're naturally going to take breaks from doing shadow work. And and by making videos about this deck every day, uh, it it we, I t I can tell a difference yeah. in in the way I feel. Like other people don't irritate me as much as they did. They yeah. used to. They just don't. I just yeah. Kinda, I kind of noticed that. I kind of let that's them be point. who they are. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And if I start to get irritated by somebody, I'm like, what are they reminding me of in myself? <laughs> yeah. You got any stories to share on that? No, I'm just telling you yeah. that that's what's going on in my head. Yeah. Now. It used to be, oh my God, if this person speaks again, I'm going to die to, hmm. Like, they're why are really, they, why they're are reminding they, me of something in myself. For me, it's like, why are they irritating me so much? Yeah. Instead of just, shut the fuck up. I, but I don't even care. I'm like, keep talking. Yeah. Keep talking. I'm okay. I'm comfortable. It's fine. Nothing Maybe. serious is going on. If you want to complain about something, go right ahead. I'm not going to join in, but you do you. That's really been what it's like. Yeah, it has. Well, has this ever, has this come to a close? This, yeah, I feel yeah. like this has been a pretty substantial uh, episode. We yeah. just we initially began just wanted to talk about this one page, but yeah, thank you for joining us on this adventure. It has been an adventure. And it has been an adventure. And this was kind of just a chat, a little podcast episode with Patrick and myself. And uh, you also got a sneak peek on 
where to pick up the different versions of the shadow work deck and a another video i think we'll be doing something a little more focused on that we're, we still got to go over so, one archetype the goddess we're saving yes. that we're saving that one for the last one so we'll get into that one soon thank you all for watching and we will see you next time bye bye bye